Hello everyone, welcome back once again to A Fierce Kitchen where friends and family cook. I believe the grace of God is keeping us and we are all doing well. My name is Ifia and if today is your first time coming across this channel, a warm welcome to join us. And kindly remember to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that anytime I upload a video, you would be notified so you can watch. And to my returning subscribers, I say thank you so much and God bless you for the support so far. In this video, I come your way with four different recipes you are going to love. And I'm entreating you to patiently watch the video till the end. In this recipe, we learn some tips to cut costs or to save some money in this time of recession. And as we approach the festive season, our families are expecting a great deal from us in our kitchen. All the yummy things, all the sweet things, all the good things that comes with this festive season. And I have made this video especially for you. And I plead with you to watch till the end because you are going to enjoy it. It is less scripted because I want you to get every step of the way. I took my time so you do not fail in making these recipes at home. Let's get right into the video. It's cold out here, so I'm going to put the eggs in some warm water to get it to room temperature. If you're in a country where it's warm, you can absolutely skip this part. In a separate bowl, I'm going to measure in 600 grams of flour. So when making one pound of cake, you are going to need only 300 grams. But because we are making two pounds of cake, I am going to measure in 600 grams of flour. To that, I would add one teaspoon of salt as well as four teaspoons of baking powder. I will then nicely pass it through the strainer, stir everything nicely and then set it aside. I then take my measuring cup and pour in 125 ml of milk. I pour in the first one and then I pour in the second one. And this is because we are making two pounds of cake and not one. And then I pour in 125 ml of oil and then I pour in the second one. So if you were making a pound of cake, you would just use... 125 ml and not times two yeah i don't know if i'm making sense but following the video i think you would get what i'm trying to say and then mix it as well and set it aside i will then move on to slice up my chocolates we are going to cut them into tiny bits yes we are using this in replacement of our chocolate chips it is very expensive here or almost impossible to get some in the grocery store to buy and this i got for 79 cents in little which is a way of cutting cost because things are very expensive in the market now After cutting it nicely, just like so in the video, I'm going to put it in a separate bowl and set it aside. I am going to then move on to my orange and then grate it. We want the zest out of this orange. And this is what we are using to replace our vanilla essence or any kind of essence you would use for the cake. And this is also a very perfect way to cut cost. 
vanilla essence is very expensive especially in this country where i find myself we have a small tiny bottle going for about three euros and you can't even use it more than three times for baking so replacing your vanilla essence with some orange zest would go a great deal to save you some money as well as give you a perfect cake sincerely when I use vanilla essence for my cake, I still smell eggs in my cake. I'm going to set this one aside and then take a very clean bowl. And then into the bowl, I am going to break in eight eggs. I am first going to break it into a smaller bowl before transferring it into a bigger bowl. And this is just to ensure I don't have any eggshells in my pastry or in my cake so I break it into the small bowl and then transfer it into the big bowl I am then going to whisk it for a very short time about one minute and then I'm going to go in and pour my sugar I'm also adding 125 grams of sugar I add in the first one whisk a little bit add in the second one and whisk as well and we are going to whisk this until it is light it is creamy it is smooth and it is fluffy just like I'm doing in the video in this recipe I also replaced my butter with oil which is quite affordable because the price of margarine or butter now is very expensive the outcome the oil gives is very perfect as compared to using butter so just try this at home and then I'll be happy if you share a picture of how your recipe turned out with me I'll be so so glad you did so this is how our beta is looking like it's looking so smooth nice and fluffy to ensure that my beta is nice, smooth, creamy and fluffy, I try to draw an 8 with my whisk and there you have it. I then add in my orange zest and mix it with my spatula just like I'm doing in the video. It's now time to put the whisking machine away and then use my hand whisk. So I'm going to go in with my flour little by little and adding in the milk and the oil side by side until everything is nicely mixed up very well so just like i'm doing in the video i am not going to go in with the whisk anymore i'm going to use the hand whisk just like i'm doing and make sure i mix everything until it is smooth I continue pouring in my flour and then add in some oil and milk and then mix it in again and mix it in again until we attain the smooth and beautiful perfect picture we are looking for.
I'm going to take my baking molds, grease them with some butter as well as some flour and set it aside, ready for our beta to go into it, just like I'm doing in the video. We then go back to our cake. It's looking almost perfect. I'm going to go ahead and clean the sides of the bowl just like I'm doing. And then go on and add in my nicely cut chocolate, which is replacing our chocolate chips. I'm going to mix it nicely and then transfer it into our baking mold. After pouring in the beta into our baking molds, we are going to hit the sides of our baking molds just to ensure or to get rid of any excess air. And trust me, if you have never ever tried your hands on making some cake at home yourself, please be inspired to try this at home this season and you are going to love it and there it goes into our preheated oven baking at 180 degrees celsius or maximum 200 degrees celsius for 45 minutes or maximum one hour after 45 minutes, I open the oven to check on the cake. I push a stick through it and then if it comes out clean, it means your cake is ready. But if it doesn't come out clean, it means you have to put the cake back in for it to cook through. So I'm going to put it back in the oven for a maximum of 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I check again and our cake is ready. And look at this beautiful cake. It looks absolutely beautiful. I allow it to cool for about 20 minutes and then get it out of the baking mold. I turn it and flip it just like I'm doing in the video. And look how gorgeous and clean this cake looks. And for the taste, ah, oh, it is so 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 good just give it a try and testify for yourself this one is called eating is believing and not seeing is believing Welcome to SCS Kitchen, where friends and family cook with a taste of excellence. If yes, kitchen, dead, 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 
Dell. So tasty. Trusty Bass TV is where brands meet customers. In this second recipe, I share with you how to make okra soup. So in my pot, I have some parboiled assorted meat. I have some cow tripe. I have some cow skin, which we call wele in our local dialect. And then I have some meat as well as some snails. And then I have parboiled this nicely to get rid of any chemical. I have some okra. I also have some smoked mackerel as well as some smoked catfish which I have nicely deboned and then I have some onion one bulb of onion I have a thumb of ginger nicely cut I have four cloves of garlic and I have one habanero pepper on the side I have some rosemary and then I have some fennel seeds as well as some anise seeds i'm going to begin by cutting up the onion into the blender i cut it in my pounds because i felt comfortable this way and i thought getting the cutting board was going to waste much time and then to the onions i add in my anise seeds my fennel seeds and then my rosemary i then go in with my ginger my green marinade i have a recipe of the green marinade on my channel i am going to share a link of it in the description box so you can watch it and then make some for yourself at home it makes cooking very easy and very short as well as my garlic and then my habanero pepper i also add in some salt to taste and then a glass of water and i'm going to give this a very smooth blend after blending, I'm going to pour the marinade on my meat, my assorted meat, and then add in some beef stock, cover up and bring it to a boil. So into my okra, I'm going to grate some ginger. The ginger is frozen. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda, just for some more slime in my okra. I am going to add in two cups of water and then set it boiling or cooking. On the side, I'm also going to start prepping my kale which is what we are using in place of our spinach. I'm going to get the kill off the stalk, just like I'm doing in the video. Nicely. My kill has been washed already, nicely washed. I'm going to do this until I am done with everything I have in my strainer. I think this is the same way we do to our consumer. That is especially what we have in Ghana. They are quite big, so you have the big stock on the consumer. Unlike the ones I see here in Europe, which are very tiny, so there's no need taking them off the stock. But this one needs to be taken off, otherwise it's going to be quite hard in the food. The best way to go about it is to get it off the stock, just like I'm doing in the video. And then cut them up nicely, just like I have done. Put it in the strainer and then set it aside. So on the other side, you can see our okra is cooking nicely. So I'm going to beat it just like I'm doing in the video, just to activate the slime. I want more slime in my okra. But if you don't want your okra so slimy, you can skip the total biocarbonate process. But I like my okra very slimy. I'm sorry if the sound irritates you, but I love it like that. Yes. 
very slimy. Oh, te kura and te. As I mea, odo wonsa, e fa kona biye kwa no ka krebi ni ya, that kind of thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that is how I love my oko. And then we are going to go on and clean our crab. Chese nkwanya yeye wongo. Bibia kakra, 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 kakra. Enu muode kakra. Insu niye sevisi kakra. Wongo, sa. And do well to clean your crab so nicely. A lot of people don't know how to clean up their crab. And I hope this video helps you to know how to clean your crab. Na ubi oho beye mkwai no na koto na pre ni nina adi dan kwai ni mo. Please get rid of those ones. You don't need them in the soup. You can't even eat those parts. Inti ubu bu koto ne pre. Ubu bu ni nina waho. Na mkwai na ye kama. Dan se koto na pre ni nina adi demon kase ni adi adie. Ebe tu mikuwa wa we prao. Oh, uh -huh. All I'm saying is get rid of the sharp edges of the crab and the, those flat, flat parts. We don't need them. There is nothing in there. So just get rid of them to make your, your soup look, look good and, and nice. Yeah. This is just a joke, by the way. Yeah. But you should try and treat your crab nicely before <laughs> dropping it into your soup. Yeah. Ububuna pre na maybe ane na ya kama uyi kwato ne tu swa na chese kwato ne huwa ya kono oh yeah so that is how you do it just like I'm doing in the video na ne chino so wa white na we ye fi biya we free ho wa wa hu fu no kama clean water odi ya hu fu mo be mi ensa be mi enu tel se wa obe hu se un si ona ya very clear. Oh, mm -hmm. say ya, yeah, pepe, pepe, send ya, me, no, no, sa, pepe, pepe. Wow, honey, come on. And then we are going to set it aside and then move on to check on our soup. So, back to check on our soup. It's in progress. It's cooking beautifully. So I'm going to get the snails and the cow skin out of the pot. I don't want to overcook it. I still want it in that crunchy way. So I'm going to get it out of the pot and set it aside. After setting it aside, I am going to cover up again and allow the meat to cook thoroughly through because it it feels a bit hard yeah i have not achieved the tenderness i am looking for so i'm going to cover up and allow it to cook a little bit more i check again after 15 minutes and i'm satisfied with the tenderness so i'm going to get it out I want to toast it a little bit in the oven. My family is not used to like eating meat this fresh and chewy. We all know how meat tastes like when it's just cooked and not toasted or baked. Yeah, so that is the kind of texture I want for the meat. So I'm going to toast it a little bit in the oven to get that kind of little bit of dryness. I then go in with my mackerel and my smoked catfish. I'm going to give it a good stir so the fish can soak up some of the juices we have already going on in there. And then cover up for about 10 minutes. And then it's now time to go in with my crab. I cover it as well and allow it some five minutes and on the side we are going to fry some onions in some palm oil yes so slice up some onions add it into the palm oil and fry it yeah for about five minutes maximum seven minutes just like I'm doing I don't know who else gets excited when food is about to be ready but oh I love food and I get excited with anything about food 
so we are done with our frying i'm going to set it aside and it is now time to reintroduce my meat back into the pot as well as my cow skin and my snails stir nicely just like i'm doing i tasted for salt and it needed a little bit more so i went ahead to add in a little bit more salt i also seasoned with a tablespoon of shrimp powder and this shrimp powder took the whole soup to a different level i was not able to capture that i don't know how it happened but yes i added a tablespoon of shrimp powder after i added the salt and now we are good to go it's time to add in our okra and the smell at this point in the house is oh, absolutely good it smells divine after adding in the okra it is time to add in my oil so i go in with my oil pour it in and then give it a good stir to make sure everything is nicely mixed up so in this recipe we realize we didn't add tomatoes and that is just to get a different taste in my okra soup there are some of the soups or stews that when i do i add tomatoes and there are some that i don't add tomatoes that is just to be able to dance in between the different tastes so that the children or the family don't get used to just one taste yes so it's just a way of bringing up different flavors in cooking in see everyone on my way the tomatoes become we on my way on fat tomatoes and come yeah and it is just to be able to bring to the table dishes with different taste yeah that is the whole idea behind it in see don't be used to just the one way of cooking every day ASR if no people get tired or the children or the family gets tired so please try to be able to play around with the recipes and don't stick to just one way of cooking every day so as you can see our kale is already in i have stirred it nicely and i'm going to allow it to cook for about five minutes yes and as you can see i have dropped in some green peppers yeah just for a little bit of more heat and our soup is ready and oh a kwankasa papa pa and i hope you'll be inspired to try this at home it tastes absolutely delicious and we enjoy the soup with some healthy oatmeal banco, which I have a recipe on my channel. Kindly feel free to check it out. It was absolutely good and there is no two ways about it. It sounds kind of weird saying oatmeal banco, but it actually tasted like banco. And it is even difficult to tell the difference between the actual banco try the oatmeal banco and you are going to love it it doesn't taste any different at all so we move on to the next recipe so this recipe is what we call a belly walls yes let's get right into it so for this recipe all we need are the powdered milk we have different types we have pig we have needle we have all the other ones yes so you can use any one of them we have a clean bowl as well as a fresh coconut and then some powdered milk so i have measured in three cups of powdered milk and then we have some condensed milk and then we have our blender behind us to do the job for us so that is what we'll be using to blend our coconut and find the history of how we came about the name Apele Walls on Sweet Ajele's channel. If only you are interested, you can check it up on her channel. So I tried to crack up the coconuts with my kitchen hammer to get rid of the hard part. And then with my peeler, I get the brown skin off.
we just need the white part for the recipe cut it up put it in the blender add some water and then blend until it is very smooth I then take my clean bowl with my strainer already lined up with the cheesecloth and then pour the coconut into it to strain it because the only thing we are using for the recipe is the juice out of the coconut. So to my coconut juice I add my condensed milk and kindly note that you can control the quantity of condensed milk you put into your ice cream so it depends on how sweet you want it or how less sweet you want it so it all depends on you. After adding in the condensed milk I'm going to give it a good stir and then goes in my powdered milk and I'm going to stir this until there are no lumps in the ice cream. I then add in some water because it was too sweet. I need it lightly sweet and not too sweet. So I add in some water to reduce the sweetness. So now our ice cream is ready. As simple as this. And this can take you less than 20 minutes to finish. So I pour it into my funnel cup and then distribute it nicely in my cups. After pouring them into my cups, I am going to put the ice cream sticks inside, cover up with the aluminium foil nicely and then into the freezer it goes. As simple as this, no stress. Ice cream is very expensive, especially here where I find myself. So you might consider going the affordable way to save just some little coins for the girls. <laughs> yes, that was just by the way. So you realized when you put the aluminium foil on, we still have the stick showing. Yeah, so you just push it down so that the stick goes through the aluminium foil. And we are doing this just so we don't have any extra unwanted particles going into our local ice cream popsicle just like i'm doing so now into the freezer it goes and i left this overnight so it's like 24 hours and then I get the ice cream out of the freezer and then I take the foil off and this is how our ice cream looks like yes so after taking the foil off you allow the ice cream to rest for about 20 minutes or you allow the ice cream to rest until you are able to twist the stick or turn the stick around inside the ice cream but if you are in a hurry you can just get some water in a small bowl and then put the ice cream cups inside just to facilitate it coming out easily if you are in a hurry that is the other option for you and just like so our ice cream is ready ready to be enjoyed 
right to dig in and mine oh mine it was so good just so delicious it was sweet over so it was yummy it is very cold here but i ate the ice cream mama minya cold because i just felt like oh i have to eat ice cream today i have to eat ice cream today it was so sweet I got a flu out of this and then I said it was the kids who gave me flu. I enjoyed it and I hope you would be inspired to try this at home. You are going to love it and the kids are going to love it. Yes, thank you so much for watching till this far. We move on to the next recipe. Let's get right into it. We are making some pak 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 jollof rice. Yes. So in a clean pot, add in some oil. Add in your sliced up onions and fry until it's translucent. When translucent, you go in with your tomato paste. Fry as well for about 5 to 10 minutes. So this is a pak pak pa jollof rice recipe on a day when you don't have so much time on your side to fry and cook and cook and cook the tomatoes for hours until it is done. This is a very easy to go option for you. It saves you a lot of time and then food gets ready in a very short time. And then you go in with your sliced up habanero pepper. You stir that in as well and fry for a maximum two minutes. I then season this with some shrimp powder. I really don't understand the thing about shrimp powder. It really transforms the taste of your food. It takes it to a whole different level. I will then add in some chicken stock to loosen up our tomato paste a little bit I then allow it to fry a bit and I go in with my OMB jollof spice I add in a teaspoon just to spice up our jollof I then taste for season to adjust. I add in my chicken bouillon. And I go in with some salt as well. And then stir nicely until it is very well mixed. And then in goes my nicely washed rice. I add it. And then try and mix it up so it is nicely incorporated so that the tomato sauce and the rice is well mixed in our cooking pot. I will then allow the rice to toast on low heat for about 10 minutes. This helps the rice to come out in single grains. So just like so, I'm going to leave the rice to toast for a little bit while. After toasting for about 10 minutes, I go in with my chicken stock and then some hot water so we can cook our rice finally. I tasted for salt and it needed a little bit more salt. So I added a little bit salt and then stirred very well, cover up and then allow it to cook.
So I cover with a parchment paper and allow it to cook for about 15 more minutes. After 15 more minutes, I open up and we are almost there. I then go in with my corned beef and then stir so the corned beef gets well mixed in our rice. At a point it was difficult mixing very well with the spatula so I went in with my fork which made the job so easy to do. So as you can see that's what I'm doing in the video. I then cover up again with the parchment paper and allow it 10 more minutes and then now it's time to go in with my nicely sliced carrots and some green bell peppers and this transforms the smell of the food to a whole different level. I cover up again and allow the vegetables to cook for a little while and then I give it a good stir just to mix things up in our pot. At this point we are almost there so I cover for the last time with the parchment paper. We still have some single grains in there which are like not yet cooked. So I cover for the last time and then give it 10 more minutes. And ta-da! Here we go after 10 minutes. As you can see for yourself, our rice is ready to be served and enjoyed. Sweet people, I hope you feel so inspired to try this recipe out at home. You would love it. The kids would love it. The family would love it. Friends would love it. And your visitors would love it. Thank you all so, so much for your time with us. Time is precious. So if you are able to watch this video till the end, I say God richly bless you and may your week be lovely and fruitful. Till I come here again in the next video, keep safe and don't forget to keep your little light shining. Bye.
If yes, kitchen. Dead, 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 dead. So tasty.